How you doing? I'm doing well. How Excellent. are you? I'm great, thanks. I'm great. Beautiful sunny day out. And it snowed. And it snowed. Finally. Yeah, and, and a, a decent snow. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's more than a dusting. Not, exactly, exactly. Not enough to go out and ski yet. Oh, but, gosh, no. Uh, no. Maybe we'll get there by Christmas. Who knows? Oh, I'm sure, though, that places like Killington are open, but... They're, they're, yeah, they're making snow. Right, you're not going to go cross-country skiing quite yet. Not quite yet. But it, it, it like I said, a little more than a dusting, and it's it's very pretty. Yes, yeah. it's gorgeous. How was yeah. your weekend? My weekend was great. I, I got kind of proud that I got back on the rowing machine um, at the local uh, aquatic center, which is phenomenal up here in the Upper Valley. Yeah. Um, how was your weekend? Uh, it was lovely. We had a little Christmas shindig. Excellent. And uh, made some traditional Danish uh, Christmas recipes. Oh, you did? Yep. Did yep. you like candles on your tree, though? We did not, because oh. there were two babies, uh, <laughs> one other one, in, you know, and mine. Uh, so we, we decided not to. There were candles on the table and a okay. nice big fire, such that we had to, like, open the windows, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah, that's the price of, I want the roaring fire, but we're also cooking ourselves. Which is actually great, because it's still, like, cold. It's definitely cold season here. And oh, I was yes. like, if we're going to have a little a little shindig, we got to keep yeah. some ventilation going. And it's going to be bitter tonight. Oh, I meant like sick cold, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, that's no good. Yeah. Um, Anyways. So, and your sheep have snow on them. They do. Uh, so I took a little clip to show you guys. So what you're seeing now is my small little flock of sheep. Uh, they're also colored Corydale. We got our Corydale from Todd and Peggy um, now three and a half years ago, something two and a half years ago. Yeah, th three and a half. Yeah. Uh, a while okay. ago, and then we bred them, and now we have five. We just kept all of them. Uh, so and you have jackets on all yours. They have jackets. I'm yeah. impressed. I don't have jackets. Well, there's only five of them to deal with. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, so I know you've been dying to ask me this. Peggy, how many turtlenecks do you own? <laughs> like in every podcast, I'm wearing a turtleneck, and I want to be clear I start wearing turtlenecks at the end of August. Because I, I just, I'm always cold. I, just, I, I actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Oh, you have black on it. <laughs> I have a turtleneck on today. It's my, like, one of a couple. And then I've got the sweater, of course, too. Yeah, <laughs> I have dozens of turtlenecks. Yeah. And that's just my uniform. And not just at the mill. I think it's I, great. Yeah, but I mean, how many shades I've got, you know, whatever. But so, do you ever wear scarves? No. So that deprives you of the joy of scarf knitting and scarf wearing. I, I knit them thinking... Yes, now I will. And in fact, I'm knitting one that I started last week that I'm going to have to figure out how to work it into my wardrobe. But you can't wear it during when you're operating the mill. No, absolutely not. It, uh, yeah, it's like a... <laughs> yeah, it's a bad idea. Bad like, idea, right. There's a lot of rolling pieces that... Right. Well, I can't right, even right, think right. about it. Yeah. Yeah, hmm, so, so anyway. we have a new toy. Oh, we have a new toy, yeah. Um, kind of badass. It's metal. Yeah. It's a ball winder. Brand new. It's only done one ball, right? Uh, I, I played around. I, I looked for all of the little small skeins. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't have anything that was jumping out at me that I needed to ball up. Yep. Um, so I, I unwrapped a few small skeins. This is one. Um, this is the Alpen oh, yeah. Glow, our last little skein of what we have left. Yeah. Just to play around. And I've never owned one of these things. It's such a treat to have. And this I, is a heavy duty one. This is heavy. Anastasia and I were opening it, and she was like, oh, "That's a good one." Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, I think we splurged." So yeah, I, good job, I, I, um, they have lighter weight ones that are plastic, but we need one an industrial one. Yes, I think so. That's what this is. And I think this crowd watching probably knows, but why do you need a ball winder? And also, why don't we just sell it like this? Well, we're that takes time to do that. One, but also I've heard for storage, you kind of want to store them in the skein because it puts less um, tension and pressure. Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, I hadn't your, thought about that. You're absolutely your right. But then when you're going for a project, you absolutely shouldn't start knitting from one of these no, because you're going to get you a can't. big tangle right away. Right, right, right. So, yeah, um, you got a ball line. Yeah, what I've always done for, you know, I've been knitting now for 20, 25 years. I've just put two chair backs right. together, stuck the skein over there, and just spent some time right. getting to know my yarn. But this is so nice because it's a, a center pull ball, so you can kind of choose if you want to start with the middle. Right. And you can or really the see with making tracks, you really get a sense. Yeah, you can really see those colors changing. Right. Um, so, anyways, we have this now. 
Uh, I think we'll have it in our little retail shop in the back. Right. So if anyone wants to come and get their stain that you know you purchased here put into a ball, we can do that. Yeah. And we'll also um, offer it online as well. Yeah, we have a, a kind of a primitive Swift, which is what you put the skein around. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a really nice Swift uh, coming in January, which yes. I can't wait to, to see. We're really yeah up in our game with the with the equipment here. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just yeah. excited to also personally bring my skein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to get use. all the balls wound. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Great. Um, so so we're going to continue our our pattern here. Uh, last week uh, we did a tour of the picker. And today, Amanda is going to show you our uh, terribly important carter. So um, take it away, Amanda, and the carter. So this is our carter. The purpose of the carter is to take the loose picked wool like this and turn it into carded roving, uh, which is a strand of uh, wool that is starting to get aligned and it also can go on and do the rest of our processing. We'll show you that at the end. Um, so our carter is about 15 years old. It's made by a company called Romella out of Italy. It is a workhorse. Uh, we have this thing running pretty much all day um, to keep the mill going along. And we can process about six pounds an hour. So I'll walk you through how that is done. Basically we take the loose wool that's been picked and to see how that works, watch our last episode, Millcast 5, where we go through our picker. We weigh out a half pound at a time. So here we've got a half pound in this uh, canister and we put it on the belt. At the beginning, we'll fill it up with one pound of fiber, but as it's going, we sort of let it go through halfway and then we fill it in another um, half pound here. And this thing moves, <sighs> Probably about 10 minutes to clear off entirely so about every five minutes we're coming we're putting the wool on the belt we're checking for things like toenails make sure they didn't end up in our uh, picked fiber a lot of the vegetable matter and stuff um, that's kind of yucky does fall off in the picking process but some of the finer stuff uh, will come out in the process of carding so once we've got it on the belt here, from the belt it goes through these series of rollers with a bunch of shallow, sharp teeth on them that as they spin, they're starting to tease apart the fiber and align those fibers. So it goes in one end with these tiny rollers and then it, as it goes, um, there's a really big roller in the center that's moving super fast and sort of distributing the fiber from one set of rollers to the other, getting increasingly more combed out and at the other end of the machine, it comes off on the doffer, and uh, so we've got the, the doffer comb vibrating, and there's a static bar up above that's helping us out with our static issues, which we'll talk about. Um, and then we are, it comes off sort of as a web of fiber. So this machine actually is capable of making bats as well, but with the attachment that we have on, that's pretty difficult to take off, we're making roving. So how we make roving from this web is we blow a puff of um, compressed air onto that fiber through these little tubes, and then it travels this way. We grab, at the beginning of our, our processing, we grab this very fancy tool, which is um, our pipe cleaner and we take the fibers, pass it through this calendar twister system, which adds just a little bit of twist to keep it held together, as well as sort of compresses it into roving, which is a strand of unspun wool. From there, the roving goes up and over into the can coiler here, which passes it through um, these rollers and into this spring-loaded can, sort of like soft serve ice cream. So here I can show you what it looks like once it comes out of uh, the can coiler. And so the fibers here, they're still kind of going every which way, but they're organized into this strand of roving, which we can then um, take to the pin drafter. So that was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, I, the carter is very important. Uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, it's kind of running all day long. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention was the maintenance on that machine. Because oh, yeah. we get a lot of questions from uh, folks coming on by for tours on how do you maintain these machines. So for the Carter, uh, the big things to know about it are 
you know, there's grease points like any one of our machines. We have to keep it greased about once a month or so. And we kind of just look out for if it's running low on right. grease at this point. And then uh, we also go in, uh, you know, weekly or every other week and actually do a deep clean on those rollers. So we put on gloves. Actually, they're, they're sitting around yeah. here. We put on some um, gloves to protect our hands because you do not want to go anywhere near that thing with your raw skin. The, the, the pins are wicked sharp. Yeah. Wicked sharp. That yeah. final roller where you saw Peggy's hands like sort of getting it going, that one's not very sharp, but the right. rest of them, um, yeah. you need gloves to use. And then we have these, they look like hand carter right. um, um, combs or, or whatever you would call them. And we just sort of go with the grain and to take off any sort of bits of vegetable matter. Right. Or, Sometimes we get little wood chips, you know, our hard line is we don't take any fiber that um, right. from animals bedded in wood chips, but occasionally you see right. some come in. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we get in there with little tweezers, but you want to keep those clean so that we can get the best possible roving off of that machine. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the trouble. Well, things can, can jam. <laughs> Which is really unfortunate when it does. but And it's always on Friday afternoon. Yeah, Friday, yeah. You can kind of set your clock. If it's going to jam, it's going to be about, about 2.15 on Friday. <laughs> and um, usually we can avoid the jamming by picking, if it's, a, if it's a lock that's a little stuck up at the top, you just take that extra time and pick it again. Sometimes, though, you've picked it, it looks great, and it doesn't jam right away. It might maybe get a pound or two going, and what's happening is it, the jam is backing up until all of a sudden that roving that was coming out nice and smooth starts sagging. There's just other indications that says there's a jam. And then of course, as soon as you know there's a jam, you gotta turn the carter off. And, and the first time we <laughs> noticed a jam, it was a loud noise. Uh, right, it because it was... It, if, when, it, when it builds up enough, there's a sort of like a, a rubber belt um, that thankfully doesn't just like break and go scattering, right. but it, you know, it'll, it'll, skip. it'll skip some, some right. teeth on the cog. I think we've gotten better at recognizing the signs. Oh yeah. It's, and it's uh, also not been as big of a deal because now we know what's up, but we'll right. show you a picture now of, yeah. of what kind of happens when it, when it gets jammed. Yeah. You're underneath there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's usually one person go, you know, the, the machine is completely off the first step. Yeah. Uh, and then one person goes underneath. <laughs> with a tweezers. I'll say I have not had my fair share of jam un yeah, going under yeah, because no. for one, I was pregnant for a long time. Right. <laughs> and for two, uh, most of the carting gets done uh, during the daytime and I'm usually the, the evening yeah, shift. It's, it's so. really fallen on Anastasia and Todd to um, uh, unjam it. Yeah. But while that person's underneath with the tweezers, the other person's with the crank slowly turning it. The motors get, yeah, you yeah. have a little hand crank so the motors can be turned by hand. Right, so we can get to all the areas that are, you know what, it happens. It happens and we probably go once a week. No, I was about to say, <laughs> we can go through stretches and get really lucky and then some, then, then the Mars in retrograde, I don't know, but jam and then another jam. Um, yeah, and I think we've gotten to a point where like we just have feelings about fiber that might jam. Yeah. And I would say, it, you know, it's sort of the, the like maybe fibers on the long side tend to jam a little more. Yeah, and the ones that are have locks and you feel like you've picked yep. them up and you've opened them up on the picker and they're just not and enough. And it truly is so much easier to just pick it twice because right. it will take way less time yeah, it takes and irritation. About, I'd say at the smoothest, it takes at least 20 minutes minimum to unjam. And that's 20 minutes where the people involved can't, can't be have doing anything, anything else. else running. Yeah. So we stop yeah. the line or you got to wait for what's on the yeah. spinner to stop. Yeah. So now, we, now we do sound like factory workers. You know? <laughs> stop the line. <laughs> yeah. We got to exactly. jam. And yeah, exactly. you know, it's just one of those things that yeah. the price of doing business. But we, tr we do try to avoid it. And that is some of the explanation for some of our fiber requirements is right. stuff we know that, that might be tricky. Um, but another fiber requirement that we've got is... Uh, a certain amount of crimp needs to go in. Right. Do you Do you wanna wanna go? Go? Well, the, so we, we've talked about crimp before, and crimp is the zig and the zag in the fibers that goes across. Uh, super crimpy, Cormo, Corydale, Merino, Merino, tight, 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 shallow uh, zigzag. So the yarn then is has the memory of that zigzag, and it's very uh, spongy and lofty. You have to, like, try a little to pull those fibers right. apart from each right. other. Uh, long long wools that don't have a lot of crimp, um, blue face Lester, uh, uh, border Lester, um, Wensleydale. Wensleydale, Teeswater, Gotland, some thin. And the challenge is that when it's going through the carter, it, you saw how it has to go up and get into that can coiler. Well, that 
go up action without any, you know, if it was like alpaca, it just sloughs apart. The one variable you have is you can put some twist in it so that as it's coming off, there's some twist to try to help it hold together. But you, you know, there's some fibers, there's, you can't put enough twist in it to get it to hold together. Well, and additionally, as we'll show you in a future mill cast, the next step from the carter is the pin drafter. And it's a similar thing going from, there's a gap that it's right. got to cross. And there is no twist from the pin drafter. Correct. So in our style of semi-worsted uh, milling here, we really do have to have a certain amount of a crimp. crimp. We got to have some crimp. Yep, in order in order to go through the equipment. So what sometimes happens for, you know, for the, the yarn that we make for our own line of yarn, that has a lot of crimp in it, and, and mm -hmm. that's for a reason. Um, it also, you know, tends to be pretty soft and yeah. likable stuff. Um, for custom processing, you know, folks come in and they have absolutely beautiful, lustrous, straight fibers, yeah. and maybe a certain different type of mill equipment could work with it. But for us, what we sometimes have to suggest is blending in a little bit of combed top, um, which has a ton of crimp in it, right. um, just to basically act like glue to hold it together. And, and when you see the finished product, you would you would have no idea that it was in there. So we do anywhere from say 15, to sometimes 30. up to 30, but it usually settles in somewhere between 15 and 20. Percent, and do, yeah. Percent uh, that we add the comb, the comb top to give it that crimp mixed in to, to hold it together but again when you're holding the finished yarn you would have no idea that the comb top yeah and the comb there. top i should you know it's 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 not comb top at that point it's just falkland wool that right. we source from a commercial mill so it doesn't have any of the vm and we're not adding anything you know vegetable matter no. into someone's fiber it's no. just nice and clean and crimpy american wool yeah so that and it makes all the difference yeah do we yeah. have anything else on the on the troubles um the no I think just that's the crimp, it. yeah. There aren't that many variables on the Carter. It, it be, as, as Amanda said, it the static do, bar. We were gonna do. Oh, a little you you mentioned it when we saw that. it, but we, we we do have a static bar. One of the big challenges that we have in the mill is uh, when it's dry, which like, it is dry pretty much at least six what, months. When out I came of the in year. this morning, it was twenty eight percent. Twenty eight percent is there's not that's not enough humidity in the air. We were trying to pick today, and we had to get the hot water going in the sinks just to get some humidity in the air. But when Amanda and I first started this the lack of humidity and we were doing all we could to pump it up. It was a real nightmare. There was our first summer, 85 degrees in the mill, 75% humidity. It was truly it, a sweatshop. It was, there. it was bad. And I think and the, re we, the reason that we need the humidity is it's just like, I think I explained in a previous right. mill cast, it's like your hair in the fall when you yeah. kind of brush through it with the dryness, it just doesn't, it wants to go off every which way. Right. And with the, you know, the rolling, um, uh, rollers, you add a lot of um, static electricity right. into things, so you're charging those fibers. I, I think mean, yeah. with negative electricity, I don't with know. With electricity. With electricity. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't want to stick to each other. Right. So the crimpy fiber might be fine because it wants to grab it, it, itself and like that we would be able to get through our equipment. But especially with stuff that doesn't have quite as much crimp, right. if you have something <laughs> under 60% humidity in here, it it's would a, not hold together in that strand yeah. to pass from, you know, for in the case of the Carter, to pass from that calendar twister system over to the, the can mm -hmm. coiler. So we found a solution thanks to some other mills and a Facebook group of ours. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, gave us, gave us a beat on, a, on a, um, a source for literally static bars that are used in a lot of manufacturing for you know, like plastics, um, film beads, stuff, yeah. film stuff that just immediately cuts down the static electricity. We put it first on our pin drafter, and then we got a longer one on our Carter game changer, and we now have one also on the the spinner. And if I thought there was a way we could put one on the on the pin dra on, on the picker, I would. I just don't know where the hell we'd put it. Yeah, and uh, the picker we can tend. So the picker is like one that we could just spritz it with a little bit of we water do, yeah. directly to that the helps. fiber. If it's, that helps. Or we like to process our fiber when it still has a little bit of moisture from the scouring process yeah. still in it. But if that doesn't happen, yeah, a little squirting, some just, just straight, straight up, up water. water. Yeah. Uh, some mills, instead of using a static bar, will apply um, some s chemical solution to the fibers, right. which probably is similar to the static guard that my mom was spraying on her pantyhose to help with, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. with the static mm. there. Um, but and so we didn't really want to do that route. We didn't want right. to gunk up well, our rollers. Yeah, and anything. now that we have the static bars, you, you aren't constantly worrying 
did we apply enough of this or that? It and just, it's not getting on your hands. Yeah, it's so it's, yeah. yeah. So the static bar, how it works, it doesn't it doesn't like a, it doesn't change the nature of the fiber no. at all. We literally we plug it into the wall, and it's got these little pins in it that just emanate some Ion. ions. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we uh, understand. <laughs> we, under, we don't. We've yeah. got a guy. We just know we it can works. Call. We we got a guy. He assured us it was safe yeah. for uh, all of us right. and pregnant women right, and right, right, whatever. Right. And uh, so it it just you know. It sends down the ions right on the fiber, passing under the stream of it, and it is wild the difference it has oh. made. Uh, sometimes I'll start uh, something like the pin drafter, and and you know, oh, it was you know immediately when yeah, it's coming out. Yeah, because it comes Wah! out. Yeah, it wants to do this, <laughs> and then you like plug, plug it, it in, in, wait for it to start, and it's just yeah, <clears throat> everything calms down. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that has good. been uh, that was I would say our biggest struggle for the first yeah. six eight months till we yeah. got our first static bar was yeah the damn humidity yeah. in here and we were constantly is it too humid and we were right. running the smell like peg said with like 75 80 percent humidity which is insane for those of you that know about metal and machinery is yeah. not a healthy environment for no, these machines to live in it's going to make things rusty a lot more quickly yeah, yeah. so anyway. this summer was a little more comfortable but we're oh, still more. yeah we're yeah. still working on improvements the ac and all this stuff but that's yeah. sort of a, a rabbit hole but we just wanted to, to chat through what are the uh yeah was, the trouble, the trouble with the picker. We're, we're getting there, though. We're, we're uh, things things move pretty darn smoothly. Yeah, occasional and, and, jam, but not. not and so I'll bad. say one more note on the pick uh, on the Carter before we move along is it is our only piece of equipment that we have that is manufactured at a company which is still around. Oh yeah, we can pick up the phone. We haven't yeah. had to do that yet, or we can send an email. We actually did need some replacement parts for it. And um, Frederico and Emmanuel, <laughs> I think their names are down at Ramella, which is in Italy. Uh, they get right back to us. Yeah. They can, you know, it's expensive to ship things from Italy, but it is at least possible. That's right. There's manuals. There's human beings right. associated. The rest of this stuff, we have machine savvy friends who can exactly. come and help us exactly. out with it. But yeah. um, that is one benefit to having a fairly new piece of mill equipment. Right. It's just access. Agreed. Agreed. All right, that's, so, a, that's the Carter. <laughs> speaking of the Carter and the mill, we, we've been busy this week. We've gotten a... a it was a, a full week this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. We got a lot done. We're going to do a little quick show and tell. Um, this is pure Romney. This, this is, is... We showed you this we, last yeah, week. Yeah, we showed you the, um, the stack of... Um, it was just carded. Yeah. And now here it is. And, you know, again... It's a two-ply, looks like maybe medium weight. Yep, yep, yep. And um, just... It looks darker than the stack. Yeah, which, it, it kind of happens happen. when you yeah, but, spin it yeah, down. Yeah. Just, just gorgeous. And that's pure Romney. So as a comparison, though, we also, a couple weeks ago, God, what a difference. This, is, this also is pure Romney, but we added 15% silk. And you can give that a squeeze and then... Yeah, I mean, we, we should say that like no two Romneys yeah, are I know, the but same, you can... but that is really nice and lustrous. Yeah, there's a nice shine because, again, just 15% silk, and man, this is just yummy. Yeah, so that's yeah. silk that we source uh, right. from a, a distributor, right. and a, a custom processing customer had us add it to her order, and I think she's yeah. going to really like it. Yeah, and you know what? Um, we have another order coming up that they wanted the silk, which we don't have terribly many, but all of a sudden... A little bit back to back. This is the one that I was kind of kvetching about last week. It turned it, out lovely. It's, yeah, it's fine. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Winsleydale Valise. Valet Black. Valet Black. Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and it's it's nice. Now this is the example of not a lot of crimp. Um, so, so we did add comb. We top. did add comb top. Or but this is going to be wool, I when say. when this gets knit with, it's going to be very drapey because it it doesn't have a lot of crimp. It's gonna it's gonna be a drapey. Yeah, you're fiber. gonna want to do lace work, or you yep. can weave with something like this. Would look yep. nice. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know what so, she'll do with that, but yeah. So that's just some of the things we also have um, behind me, but we'll probably get to show it to you next week. Uh, what I'm gonna be calling peanut butter and chocolate. Mm -hmm. It's it's ragged, and what does that mean? Uh, when it's done, the sing one single will be dark, one single will be light, and when it's plied together, it'll have this ragged look to it. And we'll show that to you. Well, hold your breath and you'll see it next week. Yeah. So we've got some other stuff that we've been doing for our own little shop. So I'll start with the natural. Oh, yeah. This is the Montedale and Cheviot 
uh, white, right? Uh, which we're really excited to to get online because I think it will look really nice in the stocking <laughs> and, pattern. And, that I'm and your and your uh, nails look very dramatic <laughs> next to the white yarn. I know. I went really Christmassy with my. I haven't painted my nails since college, and I'm. It's, wow. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I feel like a new woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recognize you. I don't recognize your hands, that's for sure. Yeah, so it's, you know, similar to the rest of the solids in this line. It's oh, just yeah. undyed. Um, and if people wanted to buy it to dye over it, that would be lovely. Or yep. just knit up as a nice solid white. Uh, then oh. we've got a couple of restocks that we spun, but we'll show them to you guys. This is our January nights. Right. Making tracks. Uh, so this is sort of a combination of navies and purples and, and got a some... shot of that orangey red. Yeah, shot yeah. of that orangey red. And I think this one was named just sort of thinking about uh, when the sun sets so early this time of year and you sometimes get those red sunsets yep. in your deep dark woods. Uh, and then I really love this one. I have to think of what I want to make with it. This is the Firefly, yeah. which we just showed you guys. Yeah. And it has already almost sold out, so right. we had to do yeah. another batch. Uh, so we posted a picture of this in the dye pot on our Instagram, and someone said, oh, that looks radioactive. <laughs> it, it, that's a And Frankenstein, I also think it, yeah. Yeah, so it's got, you know, it, it's got this really, really neon green in it, and I think it just looks lovely with, with some grays, but... That's what we've been up to. Yeah, busy. In the, oh, I've got one more thing. Oh, that's right. That's right. We've. This is what's going to happen this afternoon. Yes. Yeah, so this is the Alpen Glow, which we've been sold out of for a little while. This is one, uh, one single right. ply. The, the color of the other single is slightly different. Right. Um, so it's you know marled variegated yarn, but you can see all those beautiful colors, teals and peaches, and actually. Uh, we got this color idea from you all. That's right. Um, we put a survey out there some time ago to say, what would you like us to spin? What color combo do yeah, you like? And it was peach and teal. Peach. Yeah. And you know what? It sold right out. So yeah. Thank you. Doing, yeah. So this has been dyed and um, pin drafted. So the, the next thing will be to uh, pin draft the other five pounds and then we'll spin the single, single and two ply together. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. Yeah, that's that's going on at the mill. So uh, we mentioned last week we are we've got our event coming up this Saturday and Sunday. Um, if you are of any interest in uh, if you're local, uh, the Norwich Farmers Market heads indoors to the Norwich Tracy Hall, uh, ten to one, and um, it should be a lot of fun. It's actually going to be Saturday and Sunday. Yep. So we'll be there both days. Yeah, and your farm mm. will also be yep. at our booth. So we'll yep. not only have our yarn, but you have, do you have any sheepskins left? I have some she a couple of sheepskin rugs left, and I have the felted hats. And sausage. And sausage. If you're um, in the wool business, you're in the meat business. That's, yep. that's kind of how that works. Yeah, yeah, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, and then other than that, for local folks, we have retail hours, yeah. Tuesday to Friday from 1 to 4 here. You can come shop our yarn, but also check out our new Absolutely. ball winder. Yeah. We can help you out with that. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. I've got some show and tell. You do. That's I'm right. I so don't. Excited. You do. I feel like I I, I said, I put my... Uh, set my ex expectations pretty low on the progress of this. And then I ended up getting so Whoa! into this pattern. Whoa! Amanda, I am so impressed. I know. First of all, you've knit a lot. Uh, yeah, it's been flying along. I thought this would take forever. And I'm just sitting down for like an hour or so every night at the end wow. of the day. And this pattern, so I should back up. This is the Lindell stocking by Anna Walton. Right. She designed this pattern with our Making Tracks yarn. So this I'm, is the toe. No, what? This is the toe. Okay. And it features crazy short rows, which I've never really done before. And okay. I, like I've done a few short rows here and there for like a sweater, but this okay. really teaches you what you can do with short rows. So how it's going to go come together. I'm knitting it flat and this is the heel and it's basically going to go, there's going to be another heel over here. Right. And then you'll do the seam in the back exactly, side. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So I've got a provisional cast on and I think I'll Kitchener stitch it together right. down the back. So right wow. now this is. Oh, that's the fold. That's the fold. So I'm, I'm about three quarters of the way done. Uh, wow. With I'm, this I'm part. So it impressed. might actually be ready for Christmas. It's no question. Uh, there is a whole cuff on top. Right. That I'll have to get to. I don't know. Yeah. That has a lot of like. Um, uh, Latvian, Latvian braid. braid, which yeah. I'm a little afraid of, uh, but we'll see. 
They got YouTube videos on Latvian braids. And you know, Anna has a lot of suggestions for where to find that information on the yeah. pattern. So it's well great. Done. I'm getting it with um, making tracks, of course. And it is our new Red Hots colorway and Vermont Vice. Vermont Vice. And I have a North Country Chevy at white on here, but this is kind of what we had in mind for this right. yarn is get this one out here as a replacement because we don't have any more of that um, Chevy in right. stock. So, Nicely done. Thank you. I'm really excited about it. And of course, I've got it in my Junction Fiber Mill tote, which actually we should say on the mill cast, we're running a special. If you buy, spend $150, you get one of these free. Um, through nice. our, our website, so. I did not bring anything because I'm almost done with the shawl that I started on. I said, when I'm finished, when it's totally done. Too close, I, yeah, yeah, too close yeah, to yeah, show. Yeah. But it's taking, yeah, it's not, it's, it's. I, I'm now at that point where. The rows there's, are long. There's like 168 stitches per row, so. Yeah, but, but what I'll do you, you've there. got a nice vest on today. Oh, you I, talk you know about what? that? Just like yours, I, I'm trying to remember to wear something that I knit. I knit this a long time ago. It's another classic situation where I made up the pattern um, and I had some fun. This is very early on figuring out cables. My friend Kay Shumway had someone, a somewhat similar one, and I said, I think I could figure out how to do that. So, yeah, it's a little loose in the armholes, but you're yeah. much more creative with your. I'm, I'm such a like go to Ravelry, put in all my specifications, and then I'll knit like exactly one that I'll find there. Yeah, but I'm ba knitting pretty basic stuff. So once I know the circumference, then I'm just saying, well, okay this is how many stitches yeah. that's going to take and i just do a little map and then i'm good yeah no i think it looks great yeah and you're wearing a gorgeous one. Oh yes this is sort of our origin story this, it is our, it's a good point it is our origin story <laughs> yeah i knit this with uh peggy's yarn yeah i bought it from her at the farmer's market before did not know this woman other. she showed up in uh, july of 2018 something like that 2018 yeah. bought a bunch of yarn i was like oh that was a nice sale and yeah. then and then I came back a few months later. I said, Stood here, it is. here it is. I was like, oh my God. I, I said to her, you're clearly into the fiber. You know, if you're that into fiber, come to the Savage Art Farm shearing day. And things just kind of rolled they, they from there. They went from there, but this is my, you know, it's yeah. snowy out today, double turtleneck. Uh, right. Yeah. Although now I'm pretty warm in the mill, so. I, I really like it. And what I really like if stand up for a sec, because it doesn't have the typical, you know, like I've got. Um, the ribbed bottom. Yeah, just this sort of doesn't. Ends. I like that. And I have to say, I often just roll. I, well, yeah. I yeah. do this because I'm always rolling my sleeves up. But yeah, this is just a really cozy sweater because yeah, the Corydale fiber is so yeah. nice and fluffy. And yeah, it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah yours well, too. Well done. All yeah. right. Well, we will see you next week. Yeah. Hope you guys are knitting something fun. Yeah. And, it's um, almost, and hopefully your Christmas knits are coming together. Yeah. And if you're in town, come come say hello at the Norwich Farmers Market. We'd love to see you at Tracy Hall. Yes. Next weekend, Saturday, Saturday and, and Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.